So, we had a monster goddamn slate, finally digested it. 12 games to talk about, as fast as entertaining as possible. Let's go across the NBA! <laughs> Wemby debuted. Yay, round of applause everybody. He showed out in that fourth quarter, don't let me be a hater, he showed out in that fourth quarter, was in foul trouble the whole night though. And funny enough, he had a very similar stat line like Tim Duncan in his debut, so you'll be seeing that around your timelines all over the place and here also. Don't you worry guys, I got you. Loved how the starters overall played. They showed the age, man. They showed how young they still are, unfortunately, for them, as that was their biggest issue today. Jeremy Sohan needs to be a little better finishing-wise. They need to be a little more consistent, which will be a problem. But, man, with the length they have and the size they have, I'm really excited to watch this team, man. I, I am really excited about them. I like a lot of the players they have, and they'll be, a m they'll be menacing in two years at, at, at worst. And they'll be really... Really com competent this year. Not the playoffs probably, but they'll be competent. But it was Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd who we heard all throughout the second half. Pulling the strings right in this one to get a win for the Mavs. Who looked horrific in the first half. And came out really well in the second half. Where he made Derek Lively the starter. And that was beautiful. Instead of Maxi Kleber. And I thought Derek Lively was going to start from the get-go. He didn't. It was a mistake. He started from the second half and... Derek Lively put on a show. He has a great feel, great fundamentals, great background and character, which also play a huge role. Don't get it twisted, man. When you have a great basketball background and great character, it shows a lot. And his fundamentals and feel on the defensive end are great. He has great hands. He has everything you want for a center with Luca and Kyrie, in my opinion. And if the Mavs team, if this Mavs team wants to make it far in this goddamn playoffs, he will be the third most important player in this team, in my opinion. And he put on a show today. He was better than Wemby. He was, he was probably better than Kyrie, goddammit, man. I so much wish the Warriors could have gotten him, but Derek Lyle was sensational. Just as Luka, who did play a really controlled and one of his best all-around games, in my opinion. In a, I mean, I'm not sure if in a long time, but he played really well. 33 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists. Shout out to the guys having him in fantasy. He closed them out in the fourth quarter. Stat padded a little, haha. <laughs> Front runner, haha. <clears throat> Grant Williams and Josh Green are also really good. So that's that's great, man. That's great. We'll see if Lively starts from now. I expect him to. Uh, he didn't seem like being nervous, so uh, he played fucking amazing. Uh, sorry, sorry. Let's talk about the Celtics and the Knicks game now, as Julius Randle and the Knicks continued where they left off. It was not pretty. <laughs> they were laying foundations for my next house, probably. And. Like I said, they shot really well from the three-point line, actually. But then boy shot 18 of 56 from the field, other than the three-point line. 32, 32% from everyone, everywhere, but the free throw line. God damn, I wish I could speak better. It was rough. It was really rough, especially from Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Overall, was really impressed with their effort, man. They did not lay down. Emmanuel quickly and Archie Verrett were great. They have a lot of really good pieces. They will be really good. But they need their two best players to show up, of course, next time. But, but, to be fair, it was not just them playing bad, it was also really good defense. Got that, that man, Kristaps Porzingis. Back in New York City, and I talked about how good he is, and he showed it today. As long as he's healthy, god damn. He was clutch, made the most important three-pointer three of the night, 30 points, eight boards, four blocks, defended sensationally. Uh, Jiru Holiday was also really great defensively on Jalen Brunson when they defended, you know, the Knicks players, they shot like 10 of 42 or something like that, which is crazy. Tatum was also great, he's gonna be in the MVP conversation. Jalen Brown was out, somewhere out there practicing his dribbles, I suppose. He was kinda not noticeable, but not in a bad way, I would say, kinda. He just let the game play out. I think he did not play like bad bad, just wasn't noticeable really, which doesn't have to always be a bad thing. And finally, to my favorite game of the night, or the morning for me really, <laughs> the Pacers against the Wizards. The Pacers against the Wizards. The Pacers outpaced the Wizards. Okay, I'm gonna stop with my fast-paced jokes, but that was a fast-paced game, man. <laughs> Let me hold it. The Pacers will be so fun to watch. My favorite team last year in the East, Against Jordan Poole, much made in heaven. And the Wizards, unfortunately, disappointed me a little. They were kind of all over the place defensively, which probably is expected, but that offense was just not good enough. They could not keep up with the Pacers, man. They didn't shoot the three, point, three ball well. Not sure I liked the Gallinari experiment at the five spot. And, of course, some of it was that Daniel Gafford was in foul trouble, but still, 
Daniel Gallinari, Danilo Gallinari against this fast pace Pacers team at the five spot is crazy, kind of. But he didn't play bad, per se. Their defense was overall just a huge mess. But this Pacers offense on the Pacers side of the things will be one of the best in the league. You have Tyrese cooking these fools up in the third quarter. He went 7 of 12 for 15 points. Had some highlights as always. You know, he's there for the fancy stuff. He always gets a little fancy, man. I love Tyrese Halliburton so much. 143 points scored. Bruce Brown, sensational. Such a good fit. 6 of 8 from the 3 point line. Andrew Nemhart looked really great when Tyrese Halliburton sat down. So I am I am really impressed. Rick Carl Carlisle got his extension also in this morning. So the Pacers are looking up. Shot 20 of 43 from the 3 point line. And shame we didn't get to see the rookie Jerez Walker in meaningful minutes, but he went, my man went 0 for 5 in the 5 garbage time minutes. So gotta give him time to, you know, just nurture, digest, just, you know, he'll be a secret weapon for the Pacers in the playoffs, which they'll be making, which they'll be making. Could they be the best offense in the league? Is this a hot take? Let me know in the comment section if you want. If you don't, that's also fine. Um, and like and subscribe if you want. If you don't, that's also fine. <laughs> All right. So the Pistons against the Heat. Killian Hayes starting in 2023. Might as well be a criminal offense in my opinion. Nah, but uh, I get it. Get it. He's in there for his defense. Still don't like it. I would much rather see the offense with Ivy, who went one, one of seven off the bench and the bench overall. Besides Marvin Bagley, who played the bench minutes instead of James Wiseman, won the minutes probably. He was really good. And Marcus Sasser, the rookie, impressed off the bench. Otherwise, the bench was really bad. Um, Aussar, not a pretty game overall. Still, five blocks. Defended really well. So, let's talk about the main parts here. Kate Cunningham, Jalen Duran. Both were great today. Duran played some goddamn old school bully ball with 17 points, 14 rebounds, 4 blocks. And love to see it, man. You know, if you watch the Pistons or if you at least are on Twitter, you know Jalen Duran is that guy, man. He's, he's gonna be so good. Isaiah Stewart also had a really good game. And Kate Cunningham, 30 points, 9 assists. Did not get to the line at all, which was kind of on the referees in my opinion. They were kind of pro Miami, but the, he, they, uh, but the Pistons kind of showed their... Uh, age and didn't initiate enough contact also he had 30 points like i said nine assists shooting 27 times and lo i loved it i loved the aggressiveness i loved the assertiveness assertiveness he played out there like he's the superstar that i think he will be this year that mid is smooth just gotta get to the line more and uh turn the ball over a little less but he adapted better as the game went on they were double teaming him because he was the goddamn threat on that team and I have him in fantasy. Shout out to Kate, man. I'm so excited for Kate this season, dog. He's so fun to watch. I mean, so many great young point guards here. Ah, I love it so much. For the Heat side, Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero showed horrible for Miami. And yeah, they got to the line more. The other stepped up. Jimmy stepped up in the clutch. And the Pacers, Pacers the Pistons kind of showed their age. Also with some of the shot selection and some of the misses late in that fourth quarter, but Kate will get there, Kate will get there, and you'll be in trouble, you'll will be in trouble, man, Kate versus Tyrese Halliburton conference finals in like two or three years, maybe one year, we'll see. Drink some water. Then we go to the new look rackets, where it gets really ugly, man, they got manhandled on the rebounds, <laughs> that was a nasty game from them, they lost the rebounding battle by like 30 rebounds, and Shangun was solid, Dylan Brooks was solid offensively, but they were, they were just so nasty to watch offensively. Uh, thankfully, the season starts Saturday for them, so they can pretend this season... Season? <laughs> Maybe they would be. They will eventually pretend this season didn't happen, but this new look Rockets team, I, I told, talked about how uh, off of them I am, and um, great start for me in that direction, I suppose. Really solid from Orlando, though. They wanted it more. They were really good, especially the bench in John Isaac, Gary Harris, and Cole Anthony. John Isaac, man, when healthy, he changed the game for the Magic. Uh, he was sensational on both sides of the floor today. Um, not sure I love Jalen Sachs starting and shooting that much, three, that many three-pointers. Still played okay, in my opinion. Paolo was just chilling in there. They kind of played a really chill game, I feel like. And the bench kind of brought the energy with Cole Anthony and John Isaac. Won the game for them. Shout out Markel Fultz, my guy also. Then we had the Hornets beating the Hawks, which is just disgusting. Trey Young and Dejounte Murray, unfortunately, 
even though they shot horribly in their last preseason game, and it was like, yeah, they were going to show up in the first regular season game. They did not, man. They did not show up. And do not do not look at their box scores, please. Um, Sadiq Bay was the expect exception in the starting lineup. I guess you can say Clint Capella also. Shout out to Jalen Johnson, though. The breakout is here for him. And that was seen from the preseason. He played great today, at least. Scary Terry calls them out. Lamelo was not great. It was goddamn Terry Rozier. Terry goddamn Rozier. I've had my fair share with the Warriors, you know, losing to Terry Rozier. So there's that. Mark Williams dominated with 13 and 15. Great game from him. PJ Washington was great with 25 points. And maybe the Hornets will be more fun than I expected. And I was too harsh on, uh, harsh on them. Still a very disappointing loss for Atlanta, man. Thankfully, their season also starts on Saturday. <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves also laid a lot of bricks with Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns shooting a combined 16 of 52 from the field. Nasty stuff. Some of it was really great defense from uh, from the Raptors, but some of it was just, they were just not making their shots, which they eventually will, and they shot 34% from the field and still almost won, so they will be fine in my opinion, right? Right? Right. Um, Dennis the Menace was great 22.7 assists best player in the world for a reason OG Anunobi was also sensational and Scotty Barnes was really good he had some insane blocks bench could be really ugly though for them bench could be really ugly but a good win for the Raptors who should be menacing on the defensive end which I kinda I kinda underestimated how menacing their defense should be this season the Pelicans blow to Grizzlies with Zion putting on a dunk show. Really good game from Desmond Bain for the Grizzlies, who is the main guy, not Jaren Jackson. The number one option is Desmond Bain. Don't get it twisted with Jazz suspended. And good debut for Marcus Smart. Jaren Jackson disappointed. Not nothing surprising if you watch the FIBA World Cup. I've been really low on Jaren Jackson since that, and you'll have to win me over. <laughs> I'm talking like I own him, Lumo. Nah, like he's really good. Just, just disappointing slightly, right? He's a really good player, just really disappointing on the offensive end, and there's that. Uh, the bench looks really bad for the Grizzlies, so it will be really interesting to see where they are when, when Ja gets back from the suspension. The Jazz also let Harrison Barnes go for a goddamn 33 points. They should be sent down to the G League, in my opinion. Yeah. I had Max Struess on the bench in fantasy, so there's that for the Cleveland game. <laughs> Shout out Donovan Mitchell, he was sensational. And another another bench to monitor here, but no Jared Allen today. A really great game for Isaac Okoro. Could this be his breakout year with a really good preseason for him? Maybe, maybe not. Really happy to see Ken Thomas and Ben Simmons open a little bit, even though Ben Simmons wasn't as aggressive as I wanted him to be. And last but not least, Shea back to his regular schedule programming. The Thunder are going to be a lot of fun. While the Bulls are already got them melting down. One game in. They had a goddamn players meeting one game in. That franchise is goddamn cursed since Jordan left, isn't it? Isn't it cursed since Jordan left? Hm. Yeah, my excitement for them might have been even overestimated and that video was like fucking 20 seconds long. So that's it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The Andre Ayton had six four-shot attempts. Pardon me. Four-shot attempts against the Clippers. Yeah, the, the Clippers were hooping though, the Clippers were hooping, and Scoot disappointed in his debut, kinda, but turned it up in the second half at least a little bit and showed out what he can be in this league, but it was another pretty debut for him. Anyway, that was my across the NBA recap for day one, essentially, day two, and I'll catch you all with more, hopefully, if I have the time, but I don't, I won't probably have the time to watch all the games, so we'll just talk about the games I want to talk about, but... That will be all game. So nonetheless, be kind to yourself and to others. Hope you enjoy me rambling here. And once again, be kind to yourself and to others. And peace out, baby. Craig, Drummond, White, Williams, and Kosumu, the five out there. So a new lineup. Drummond the steal. Oh, the big cat. Take your time, big cat. Oh, Drummond! Oh, Crossed no. over Chandler. Oh.